Hello my soccer universe and let's do this weekend review of the top five leagues and I add two more leagues um, in there because it was derby day yesterday. It was actually quite amazing how many derbies and I already mentioned in my video that I posted yesterday uh, most of them were kind of overlapping so I didn't see that many. Uh, the background I haven't changed much because um, I think that really the Serie A weekend was absolutely insane as you saw in my video but then i just listened to a spanish football podcast and looked over the results in spain they were equally surprising and uh, equally many talking points so yeah i'm wearing atletico madrid i uh, saw a little bit of those of them but they, they were we'll talk about it very soon that they were really good i actually had planned on liverpool but then i realized the atleti there's a big talking point there that warrants me wearing this Atletico Madrid shirt. And yeah, we have a lot of uh, Serie A back there, um, still from my jersey review video. But I honestly, I really like this background. It looks, it looks like a jersey, you know that. Okay, let's uh, run through the leagues. And I decided to do it uh, slightly geographically. We just uh, start out in La Liga, and then we're going to go first west. Then we go up north again and will end way up north no not way up north but quite north um in a league that i think i haven't covered in a, a while but it was a remarkable game but la liga we will start and on friday there were actually two games and uh, i just decided to not watch sevilla celta um because I, I thought that the bundesliga game between uh, gladbach and leipzig that we'll talk about was a little bit more interesting it was an onslaught for sevilla who got the lead and then the right off that uh celta equalizes gets kind of a lucky draw one one and i would have watched the basque derby uh if my wife was uh, working longer but uh in a way fortunately she aged enough because i really need to sleep but that was a game that i actually would have liked to see it's just that very day it's athletic bilbao winning 2-0 against sociedad uh saturday a big surprise osasuna barcelona 2-2 um Osasuna taking a lead, Barcelona turning around, I think a 16-year-old scored for Barcelona, who are still Messi-less, Suarez-less, uh, Dembele-less, and a little bit in trouble because, you know, uh, they kind of want to show that they want to sign Neymar, but offer half their squad over that, uh, making, the, making those offered players not quite happy, so... It's a little bit of a mess, I have to say, and as far as it stands now, Neymar will stay at PSG. <laughs> Very interesting and not very surprising. Uh, this transfer sum, I probably need to do another video that is for me the more the sum of could have been than uh, the summer of what actually happened. Getafe Alaves 1 1, Levante via Dolit 2 0, and Real Betis against Leganes 2 1. And then on Sunday, we had Valencia beating Mallorca 2 0, uh, two penalties as far as I heard, and then more or less the game of the weekend. Atletico Madrid against Eibar. I uh, remember Atletico Madrid had two 1 0 wins. They were quickly down against Eibar 2 0. But Mensch turned around and I think Joel Felice scored his first goal for Atleti, make it 2 2. And then he got substituted for Thomas Partey. Doesn't seem like a very positive uh, substitution, but Partey came down and makes the winner. That one I saw live. And Atleti gets three out of three. And the last time they had such a start, was when they won the championship and the time before that also when the last won the championship in 1995-96 and I think it was was it the 14-15 season where they became champions uh I think so well, not 100 percent no I think it was 13-14 13-14 seasons when the last became champions anyway so that was a big one um Espanol Granada 3-0 for Granada, Espanola really not looking good, and Granada getting an away win, which they haven't gotten so far. And then another remarkable result, Villarreal and Real Madrid, and I was really thinking of watching that one. It was just that the beginning time was 9 o'clock, and that was the reason why I didn't watch it, unlike 8.45 for the Italy games, because I knew I have to go to bed, more or less. So, yeah. My bad. Uh, always watch Villarreal. We already had a 4-4 this season. We had the 4-4s against Barcelona. And now we have a 2-2 against Real Madrid, where they twice took the lead. Real Madrid came twice back. Gareth Bale scoring and actually getting sent off. So that sends us to the following standings in La Liga. Um, with Atletico Madrid leading nine points. Uh, 
the only unbeaten team so far are Bilbao and Sevilla with seven each and then Levante with six, Real with five, Osasuna with five, Alaves with five and Barcelona with four. Um, that's a huge margin already for Atleti. I mean, that's four points on uh, Madrid and five points on Barcelona. The last time that Barcelona were five points uh, off the pace that, lay, uh, that uh, early in the season, I think they only finished fourth and this was right after World War II, something crazy like that. I just heard it on the Spanish football po podcast. Granada, Valencia, Celta, Valladolid and Sociedad also with four points each and Mallorca three. Betis, uh, three Villarreal, only two so far, but those were two spectacular draws. Getafe two and then Eibar one. They probably were, were hoping for more. Espanyol won and Leganes is the only winless team so far. And uh, since we're now having a break, I thought I'll also bring in a few stats. So I looked at 538. What are the chances? I mean, I gave another stats that it really looks well for uh, Atleti and not so well for Barcelona. But given the ratings, Barcelona is still uh, overwhelming favorites. 51% uh, to win the league. Real Madrid only 20. Atletic Madrid only 15%. You also see where it says every position, uh, kind of the distribution all the way to the right is first place. So that's why it has the big spike for Barcelona. Qualify for the Champions League is also interesting. Um, you, we are going here through the results. I mean, uh, the only teams that 538 says is realistic to win the championship is Sevilla, Bilbao, Valencia, and Real Sociedad. Everyone else is already out of the running. Uh, for relegation, it's a way more open field, which is I, I, makes sense uh, simply for the fact that there are three relegation spots and there's only one champion uh, spot. But on the other hand, also, it's a lot more closer down there. So the uh, much wider field. So let's look who is 20% uh, of above. That's Osasuna, Alaves, Granada, Valladolid, Espanyol, Ori, 31%, Leganes and Mallorca. Those seem to be kind of the last three, the ones that are really relegation threatened. But, you know, it's early in the season. Lots can happen, and those uh, ratings will also change over time. Let's move further into France, and uh, we have to finish up the last match day, and I now realize why the matches were postponed, because of the G7 uh, summit happening in France. So we had on Tuesday Montpellier beating Lyon, a uh, real surprise result, because Lyon to me was flying. They had a great start to the league, and then they lose at Montpellier. Lille beating up on Saint-Étienne, 3-0, and uh, Nice losing at home to Marseille, a notable game because of homophobic chance, and it was stopped, which keeps happening in France. Uh, on one side, I am appalled by that, but I know that they're happening uh, many stages. At least France is trying to do something about it. I hope this will happen in other leagues too. And then the matches that happened um, this weekend. Uh, PSG wins at Metz 2-0. Lyon again, not a great result. 1-1 uh, versus Bordeaux. Not wins 1-0 uh, versus uh, Montpellier. Well, more rest for Nantes. Nîmes 3-0 over Brest. Angers 2-0 over Dijon. Toulouse 2 nil over Amiens. And then on Sunday I saw a little bit of that game. Reims Lille 2 uh, nil. Rennes Nice 1-2. That's a little bit of a surprise result, I gotta say, because Rennes was also pretty good. Uh, Strasbourg Monaco 2-2. Yeah, Strasbourg bounces back from the tough Europa League defeat to Frankfurt and Marseille sent the TN 1 0, which gives you the following table. And just when you thought PSG is in trouble, nope, they are uh, top of the league again with nine points out of four games. Note they lost against Rennes, but Rennes just lost two, so 9 9, and the goal difference is. Uh, reigning supreme, also with nine points. Nice and Angers. Angers, probably the most. Um, uh, so the biggest surprise there, uh, but you know there's still a uh, lot of lots to be played. Uh, Lyon having a really a tough week. Seven points only. Reims seven, Nantes seven, Marseille seven, Toulouse seven, Lille six, Bordeaux five, Brest five, Nîmes four, Montpellier four, Metz four, Saint Etienne four. It's kind of dense here. Uh, Strasbourg has three points as does Amiens, uh, and then Monaco two and Dijon zero. So it's. Um, <laughs> I feel it's still kind of dense, but uh, the Monaco and Dijon might have trouble. So it remains to be seen. We're going to follow France uh, probably a little bit later. But I, I'm really curious how uh, this will develop there. 
Um, when you look at the 538 standings, PSG has an overwhelming advantage of winning the league at 86%, Lyon 5%, you see Lille 2% and Marseille 1%, and the rest is not really featuring anymore because PSG is so dominant. It's much more open for relegation with uh, Metz, Brest, Amiens, Dijon having over 20% chance of being relegated and Strasbourg is close there. Uh, Champions League spots since there are only three, nine in yeah, PSG, Lyon, Lille, probably from last season. But I have to see how Lille will go. Marseille could go in there, but it's still wide open. Uh, Dijon are spot on favorites to be relegated, though. Let's move one further east and let's go to Italy. I talk a lot about Italy, many of the matches I watched it. I saw. Bologna Spal, believe it or not, the last uh, minute <laughs> or so, the, saw the winner for Bologna. And again, Mihailovic, uh, despite leukemia, standing on the sidelines. Uh, in a way, pretty amazing that he's doing it. I'm not sure how good it is for his health. Milan Brescia, I said about that. I All the Serie A games that I've watched so far were somehow remarkable, except for Milan. The only remarkable thing is how bad Milan is playing. Juve Napoli game of the weekend 4 3. I uh, talk a lot about it. 3 0. Juve was up in the 62nd. In the 70th, it was 3 2. In the 82nd, it was 3 3. And then stoppage time and on goal seals it for uh, Juve. Lazio Roma. The result maybe not as surprising. Lazio was the better team, but had four times hit the woodwork. Roma twice. Absolutely nuts. Udine Parma 1 3. Parma from 1 0 down. Cagliari Inter 1 2. Remarkable because Kalia fans again make monkey chance when Lukaku is having a penalty. I don't know. Cagliari, I heard today, I think Gab Marcotti said it, they're not known for having any political affiliation like other um, groups have, so it's kind of weird, but you know. I really hope something can be done. I really hope Serie A steps in and that those people can be found that do this. That's all I want to say to that. Genio Fiorentina 2-1, uh, Fiorentina having a bad start, Atalanta Torino 2-3, saw that one, was actually an entertaining game, uh, probably should have watched uh, Villarreal, Real Madrid, although here saw a goal more, but it's kind of an empty stadium, Lecce, Hellas uh, 0-1, this was two promoted teams, and then Sassuolo also uh, completes a hellish start for Sampdoria, winning 4-1, if you look now at the table, Inter and Juve and Torino, all with six points on top of the table. Inter, uh, thanks to the 4 0 win against Lecce, having the slight advantage, but you know, uh, still not too many places, uh, games played. But you know, uh, the two Turin teams, all flawless so far. Should get a Torino jersey too, thinking about it. Thinking of it. Lazio 4, Genoa 4, Bologna 4, Hellas 4. So this is, except for Lazio, a little bit of a surprise. Um, top. Uh, half of the table, Sassuolo 3, Parma 3, Napoli 3, Napoli absolutely amazing, 7-7 seven, seven goal difference after only two games, Atalanta uh, is also 3, as does Brescia, Milan, uh, <laughs> the exact opposite almost of uh, Napoli, 3 points with 1-1, one, one. Uh, Udine 2-3, uh, is also with three points. And then Roma with just two draws, one disappointing, one rather lucky. I actually think they played well against Genoa and not so well against uh, Lazio and in both cases they managed to draw. Fiorentina has not won yet, also doesn't look good. Spal hasn't won it. Cagliari, Lecce and Sampdoria have not won yet. Sampdoria looks in really bad shape. I'm sorry to say. I hope they can get something going. When we look now at the um, uh, predictions from 538, you were still odds on favor, 66%. I'm kind of amazed Napoli is still ahead of Inter, 15%, 12%, despite Inter having a three-point advantage already. So um, that tells you also how they see Napoli. Milan, I don't believe that they give them 3%. I, but, you know, it's ratings. They're still a little bit from last season. They actually had a good return leg like last season. Uh, then Lazio, Roma, Atalanta, and Atalanta is the first team that they don't give a good chance of winning it, which I'm a little bit surprised that Atalanta is still rated so low given the great season they had. Uh, when we look at the relegation towards the bottom, I mean, over 20% is quite a broad field. Brescia, Parma, Sampdoria, Cagliari, Verona, Spal, Lecce, and Spal and Lecce over 40%. That uh, looks like spot on. 
So yeah, um, seems like a Juve race again, but let's see. I still think Inter can do something. And uh, Napoli also showed. Na Napoli needs to take care of their defensive frailties. That's for certain. But let's see how it goes. I wish that Milan was in a conversation. I actually really think they will have even a hard time getting in the top four. I would even say a hard time getting a top six if they continue this way. But yeah, they signed Rebic today. Maybe something will get going. So let's take a quick break from the top four, uh, top five leagues and go to uh, slightly north to Austria. And not because of anything special, except that the second most played derby in Europe was played in Austria, which is, of course, the Viennese derby between Austria Wien and Rapid Wien. And yeah, my last lost 1-0 uh, at home after the tough game against Brügge. And also the other thing that's remarkable is Salzburg keeps kind of their five goals per game average almost. Uh, it's kind of amazing. Uh, speaking of the Viennese Derby, it's actually media-wise still the biggest game in Austria, easily. However, it's now a very average uh, game because it's two average teams that don't have any real direction. Both were kind of in crisis now. Austria is really in crisis, Rapid not so much. Uh, there's a lot of fan trouble going on. If you look at the standings, I mean, it underlines the point. Rapid is 6th, Austria is 8th. Salzburg, 6 games, 27 goals. Uh, unbelievably, Lask, despite the loss, still holds on to a second spot. Uh, but they have, a they have a horror program after the national break. Playing away to Sturm Graz, who are in fourth, and then Salzburg at home. So mm, there might be some changes happening, but let's see. I hope if they recover well, they still can hold on to the second spot. I personally want them to just finish top six after this. Um, uh, the Everyone played everyone once, and then in the playoff, points are halved, and then you can attack and get a good result. Uh, things don't look good for Altach, and especially Admira, St. Pölten got a little bit off the schneid. Austria is in trouble. That you can say, last year was repeat this year at Austria. Uh, but maybe they will still hold on, and we'll see. Uh, I just show here the percentages. Salzburg is basically champions already. Lask is uh, overwhelming favor, favor to finish second and then everything else. I think uh, Wolfsburg or Peach Turm, that sounds about right uh, at the moment. Uh, St. Pölten and Mira going down. Let's leave Austria, go to Germany where there's more happening. Uh, and there was quite some stuff happening. Uh, Gladbach-Leipzig, I think, was the game of the weekend in, uh, when I look at standings. And Gladbach dominated most of it, but Leipzig made the goals. Timo Werner scoring three. If Embolo had a similar conversion rate, it might have been even a better game. So, yeah, it was kind of tough tough game for Gladbach, but Leipzig showed that they are a really dangerous one. wolfsburg Paderborn 1-1. Uh, Leverkusen-Hoffenheim 0-0. Schalke. Gets a win, 3-0 against Hertha after being uh, downed by uh, Bayern. Köln gets a win at Freiburg, which is huge for them. Bayern was down to Mainz 1-0. I think it was a halftime, either 1-1 one, one or 2-1, and then they win 6-1. And then the big result, Union Berlin winning against Dortmund, getting the first Bundesliga victory, and then you do it against Dortmund, 3-1. I have my doubts, slow slow them doubting in Dortmund. They were down in every game so far. They could twice turn it around. But against Union, didn't look all that convincing. Bremen gets off the Schneid 3-2 against Augsburg, but that to me is not a very impressive result. And Frankfurt turns it around against Düsseldorf, uh, which means they're standing now. Leipzig, top of the league, 3 out of 3. Bayern 7, Wolfsburg 7, Bayer Leverkusen 7, Dortmund only 6, Freiburg 6, Frankfurt 6. Gladbach with four points, Schalke for uh, Hoffmann with Union. Düsseldorf had also kind of a shaky start, uh, given that many expected them to be solid midfield, but you know, only three games played with three points, Estas, Werder and Köln. Paderborn, Augsburg and Hertha have only one point. Hertha kind of surprising to be down there. The others I would expect down there. Mainz still winless. Let's look quickly at the odds. Again, Bayern overwhelming favorites. Leipzig now more than Dortmund, which is a little bit surprising to me, but they are also higher rated. Uh, Leverkusen 6%, Hoffenheim 1%, and that's more or less seals the deal. I'm actually doubtful about Hoffenheim, to be honest. I actually could imagine Eintracht getting in there, maybe even Wolfsburg. Let's see. And don't underestimate Gladbach as well. When we look at relegation, well, Mainz and Köln with 20%, uh, and then really Union, Augsburg, Paderborn. That 
sounds about right, I have to say, from the way I would judge it. Now, I don't have a neighboring country to bridge over, but you know, Germany is on the North Sea, so we can swim over and we land straight in England. And it's really a shame that I, I can, can, can see much of the Premier League these days, but yeah, so be it. Southampton United 1-1. Kind of a downer for United. Uh, Chelsea Sheffield 2 2 also not that great. But you know, Chelsea needs to find themselves. Palace Villa 1 0. Leicester 3 1 against Bournemouth. I really like what Leicester is doing. City 4 0 against Brighton. I mean, City steaming rolling. Newcastle Watford 1 1. West Ham Norwich 2 uh, 0. And uh, Liverpool also needed to pull in some goals. I think there was some Kasane Salah controversy. But yeah, a 3 0 winners. I hope this can be evened out. Everton Wolves 3-2 and then the big one, Arsenal Tottenham where um, Spurs had a 2-0 lead, Arsenal came back, um, yeah, shaky defending and so on. It was actually, I think it was more the Tottenham uh, lost points and Arsenal won points in that one. Let's look at the standings. Liverpool still flawless and that's why I was actually thinking Liverpool, but you know, I think Atleti also quite impressive. City, though, with two points behind. And, you know, they have already scored more goals. Leicester is hanging in there. Eight, Palace, seven, Arsenal, seven, Everton, seven, West Ham, seven. I actually wouldn't mind if this is the final table, to be honest with you. Except I don't want to really go down, but let's go there. there. Uh, United with five, Tottenham with five, uh, Sheffield, five, also Chelsea, five. So kind of, I think those teams can orient themselves up. The other ones need to look a little bit down. Burnley, Southampton, Newcastle, Bournemouth, Brighton all with four. Wolves with three. Villa with three. I really would like the Villa scene and also Norwich because I think Nor Norwich plays kind of attractive. Watford seems to be in trouble. A little bit surprising because I would think that they are a mid-table team. So we had, we talked about a lot of Darby's already. We had the Rome derby, we had the Vienna derby, um, we had the North London derby, of course, and there was, of course, the old firm, the oldest derby to be played um, in Europe. So um, it's the Glasgow derby and it's the um, Viennese derby. And yeah, Celtic won 2 0 on Sunday. Um, when I switched in and saw already 1-0 for Celtic, I knew how that is going. I wish it was a little bit more uh, open. I also wish that uh, the whole Scottish league would be a little bit more open. Um, Celtic leading now with 12 ahead of Rangers, and it seems to be a foregone conclusion that Celtic will win the league. Everdeen 7, uh, Liv Livingston 8, Everdeen 7, Motherwell 7. I think those are the top teams. I forgot to tell the percentages for the Premier League. We'll finish with that one, but let's look at the SPL first. As you see, Celtic 74%, Rangers 25%, and St. John's, St. Hamilton are the ones, and also uh, St. Mirren, Ross County are the ones that are favored to go down. Let me go back to the Premier League. Let's finish on at least the high notes. <laughs> Man City, 59% of winning the league despite being behind. Liverpool, a clear favorite to finish second, but you know, also 36% of winning the league. And then the rest is basically out of the running. Spurs, Chelsea, Arsenal, 2 1 1, and that's that. When we look at relegation below, uh, everything 20% above Newcastle, mm, that hurts a little bit. Sheffield, 32, Brighton, 33, Watford, 35, Aston, 37. And Norwich, 40% remains to be seen. Well, that was my roundup for the European leagues. I added two smaller leagues in there. Um, you know, no Dutch league yet, no Portuguese league yet. Well, this will come for sure as big games will arise. Let me know what you think about, especially the percentages and how, how, how you think the standings are, whether some teams might collect themselves, some might drift off. Let's see that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment below on any of these thoughts that you have. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.